Hello, comrades, and welcome back to Shanka Show. Здравствуйте, дорогие товарищи. This is the channel full of long and boring stories about life in the USSR. So today I would like to talk to you about enemy voices. Enemy voices. Uh, that's how we used to call uh, foreign radio stations broadcasting in Russian language. Enemy voices. Vrajeskie Galasa. If you're not familiar with such term, enemy voices, uh, let me explain. Shortly after the end of World War II, in 1946, BBC, which is British Broadcasting Corporation, began its transmissions or broadcasting in Russian language, specifically designed for the Soviet listeners. A year later, in 1947, Voice of America, Golas Ameriki is Washingtona, began its Russian language broadcasting. And those guys actually were quite bold. They submitted the paperwork to the uh, Soviet newspapers and the Soviet embassy in America with the schedule asking to provide that schedule to the Soviet listeners. So BBC and Voice of America were the very first enemy voices because they began broadcasting in Russian. Over the years, uh, they were joined by many other players, uh, such like uh, Niemetska Valna, Deutsche Welle, uh, German Wave, Radio Svoboda, Radio Freedom, Radio Svobodna Europa, Radio Free Europe, Voice of Israel, Radio Tirana, even Radio Korea and Radio Beijing. So it was quite a few radio stations that all were pouring lies and disinformation into the ears of the Soviet citizens. And of course, Soviet government wasn't really happy about such situation, although, curiously enough, they began broadcasting in English in, and German back from 1920 uh, with their Radio Moscow and uh, Comintern Radio. So not surprisingly, in order to keep the fake news from the West, uh, from the Soviet citizens, shortly after, in 1949, uh, Soviet government began massive uh, construction of jamming stations all over the country. So what is the jamming uh, station? It's pretty much uh, very powerful radio antenna that creates a lot of radio noise right at the frequency where the broadcasting is going on. And uh, in 1949, they built 350 such antennas, mostly in and around the largest city, cities in the Soviet Union. By 1958, so not even 10 years later, uh, we had around 1,600 uh, such a, uh, radio jamming stations, and I said they were mostly clustered around large cities like Kiev, Moscow, Leningrad, and uh, some along the border. I actually experienced this uh, situation with radio jamming uh, firsthand because I listened quite a bit with my dad to these enemy voices. Our family owned a pretty decent radio receiver called Geolog 2, and it had uh, quite a few the shortwave frequencies that you could um, find those uh, enemy voices, uh, those radio stations from abroad. Usually you could get uh, those transmissions pretty decent quality early, early morning or late, late night. So my dad, for example, on the weekend, that would be his thing in the morning. Uh, he would just start uh, tuning in and trying to catch some news uh, from uh, Radio Freedom or German Wave, and then I'll come over on Sundays because it was on the day off for me, and I will join him listening to those uh, uh, radio stations. But as I said, unfortunately, they were jammed really hard, and that's pretty much, you know, you listen to broadcast, and there'll be this really annoying loud noise just started kind of overpowering, like, oh, oh, something like that, and it will come to the point that even if you're trying to fine-tune, uh, you just can't hear anything. Then you start searching for another frequency uh, to listen to something else. And, you know, as a kid, I had this picture that they have uh, some kind of jamming stations, giant antennas, all along the Soviet border between, you know, like Poland and the Soviet Union, kind of that on the west. But apparently uh, they placed antennas right in the city, like in Kiev. They had quite a few of those tall antennas. They're still in business now, but instead of jamming, uh, they have uh, cell phone connections now installed or antennas for the cell phones, but they're still all over the Kiev and other uh, large cities. And I wonder how bad it was for the health of the people who lived around those antennas because that was a quite a powerful signal 
to create so much uh, radio static, radio noise to actually completely jam the transmission from abroad. And people listening to these so-called enemy voices was quite like well-known thing, just a common knowledge. Uh, even famous uh, Soviet performer uh, Vysotsky, in one of his songs, he mentioned, um, let's see, it says, Вон дантист, надомник рудик, у него приемник грюндик, он его по ночами крутит, ловит контра ФРГ. So here Vysotsky is talking about dentist named Rudik, who owns radio receiver Grundig. So you see Rudik Grundig rhymes. And during the night, he is catching the radio transmissions from Germany, from FRG, Federal Republic of Germany. And I recall some times ago, someone posted a comment on my channel. I believe I already talked about this situation with jamming of the broadcasting. And uh, this guy is relative. He's from the United Kingdom used to work for BBC and there were the people listening to the Soviet jamming and they were making BBC uh, frequency kind of like drift left and right, I would say, up and down. So they're kind of trying to dodge um, the Soviet jamming. So pretty interesting, this kind of like cat and mouse game, right? And as I mentioned in my earlier videos about Gorbachev, Glasnost and Perestroika, one of those Glasnost openness uh Decisions were made that Gorbachev signed an agreement and they uh, stopped jamming foreign radio stations so people could get access to the alternative facts, right? To some fake news. And it was goes around, comes around, because in August of 1991, Gorbachev himself was listening to broadcasting from BBC and Voice of America to find out what happened in Moscow, because at that time he was down south at the Black Sea on vacation, while uh, some hard uh, liners took over government in Moscow. Okay, so this is, was the kind of extra long introduction to the main topic of this video. Today I would like to show you some Soviet era uh, cartoons, caricatures about these enemy voices and we're going to discuss them. This one is uh, very, very interesting uh, for many reasons. Uh, so it says on that uh, mouthpiece, I'm not sure how to say it correctly in English. Golas Ameriki, so Voice of America. So that's against uh, that radio station. What I find kind of amusing that the guy in the dollar hat, American hat, called pipe hat, right? He actually looks like Khrushchev, da Khrushchev. And then, of course, behind him, I think they tried to make that person look like a mix of monkey and gobels. But it's almost look racist. But here you go. This is... Uh, how they um, show what uh, Voice of America lies look like. Here's another one. So these two barking dogs have um, uh, colors, and one color says Radio Svoboda. So it's another radio station. And radio station Free Europe. Uh, so they bark in lies, of course, and it says here, there's a little rhyme, Все наше хают и поносят, барбосы лают, ветры носят. So pretty much they uh, tell bad things about everything that we do and they just keep on barking and wind is spreading their barks around. Okay, so here's another one. Uh, once again, I'm not sure what those two creatures are. Look like snakes maybe, but one is uh, saying uh, this is Radio uh, Svoboda, Radio Freedom. Another one saying it's Radio Free Europe. So definitely those two radio stations uh, were on the naughty list with the Soviets. A glove says CRU. CIA, and they used a dollar pulley, I guess, or a key. And the pot itself has provocations, lies, clivita, more lies, and uh, another like uh, vimously, so something like made up stories. And I'm not sure, it's like a, some trash pile because you even have some kind of German remnants laying there. So here, first uh, mention of CIA staying behind this. There's an interesting one. So this microphone, and you see the cord makes a dollar sign, quite smart. Um, it's Radio Free Europe, Radio Svobodna Europa. And the title of this uh, picture is Svili Gnizdo, They Made the Nest. And you see a bunch of these um, nasty characters uh, out of the, coming out of microphone, uh, spreading lies and untruths. Look at those cute kitties. Uh, so here's, we got the... These nasty cats are spreading lies and disinformation and uh, 
искаженные факты, so like you take the uh, some kind of facts or stories, then you can twist them up, right? And it's this whole uh, picture called Martovskie Katy, so cats in March, you know, they're quite loud because they're horny. So there's another picture depicting uh, who is uh, spreading lies out of those enemy voices. All right, next one. So here we have a puppet master. Master, master. And he's holding these cute little guys. One is uh, Golas Ameriki, Voice of America. Another one is Svobodna Evropa once again, Free Europe. And another one is Radio Freedom, Svoboda. And a jacket says C-R-U, C-I-A. So this is who the master of those radio voices. Okay, so here we have a celebrity, the doc, Utka, uh, walking the red carpet right into the Golas Ameriki studio, Voice of America uh, studio. And you see the limo has a dollar sign, very smart, uh, instead of the brand. And in Russian language, Utka, which means doc, also a kind of like a, a slang word or synonym for some false information. So if something was... Uh, submitted and it was a lie. They say Patsunu uh, could he stick you with a duck. So here, you know, Golas Ameriki welcomes the duck, welcome the lies. Here's the combination of two pictures. And once again, there's a, this smart kind of cord makes the dollar sign on the left. So this uh, two guys lie, uh, getting paid for it. And the picture on the right is kind of interesting. Uh, looks like, you know, there's um, a music being played, uh, but the book actually says Archipelag Gulag. So it's a uh, Gulag Archipelago. Uh, Solzhenitsyn uh, <laughs> makes the music, I guess, and it's being transmitted by the bunch of uh, people that are singing uh, those lies. This cartoon is very close to my heart. I think I actually remember seeing it. Uh, we had this uh, Ukrainian called Humor Magazine, Humoristiski Journal Pieric, Pepper, and uh, so this Ukrainian magazine has an anti-Ukrainian uh, nationalist uh, cartoon. Uh, so this guy with the uh, blue and yellow colors, which is now the national flag of Ukraine. Back then it was a nationalist flag. And same with Trizub, that uh, trident symbol. Uh, you see how much uh, things changed in the last 30 years. And he has the paper that says uh, lies about Soviet Union, and the microphone says Radio Freedom, Radio Svoboda. And he, something comment about that he is so gets used to lying, it's a natural thing for him to do. There's another one, uh, blames everything on CIA, CRU. So a CIA guy holds three mouthpieces, uh, Rupert, we say in Russian, and the one he's talking into right now, it's called Radio Freedom, Radio Svoboda. Below that again, Radio, uh, it's in Ukrainian, uh, Free Europe, and he's spreading lies and stuff. So it's almost like advertising, like, this is the radio stations, you should check it out. <laughs> Are we there yet? And this is maybe going to be the longest and the most boring video on the Shanka show. I'm ah, just kidding. Uh, so anyway, this one is a bunch of uh, specific characters, like you see a hippie guy, and then there's religious babushka, grandma. And all praying to the lies coming out of from the radio receiver. And it says Ave Maria, so religious um, broadcasting, lies about Soviet Union, anti-Sovietism. Uh, so they all praying for these uh, lies. And of course, there's a little dollar sign on the radio re uh, receiver. And uh, antenna, you see there's a cross on the top. There's a lot of packed in the one single picture. There's another uh, not pretty depiction of a voice of America, Golas Ameriki, um, and it's called Bijalis na Golas, so they heard the call. I'm not sure what those animals represent. So we have a, a boar and hyena. It looks like a crocodile or maybe a fox. And the snake, of course. So this is another hint, maybe like snake, you know, they spread lies. It relates to the Bible story. I'm not sure why, but... And there's another one for you. Now, this is a classy one. First of all, check it out, that awesome vintage radio. And uh, so that's what they're talking about. Golas Ameriki, once again, about a voice of America. And this lady, apparently, she's an aunt of Goebbels, um, the German minister of propaganda. And you see his portrait is above the radio. 
and she's claiming that while she's listening to Voice of America, she really likes doing it because it reminds her of her nephew. <laughs> it's very cute. So this Soviet cartoon um, actually shows a cooperation between Great Britain and United States. Uh, so uh, the snake has this double tongue, one called BBC, and another one is the Voice of America, and it's stretching towards the microphones, which have a signs of a dollar and a pound. So there is another lion snake uh, of the enemy voices. Here's another cartoon that shows how stupid you would look if you uh, believe, almost like you pray to every word that comes out from the enemy voices. Here, a guy praying to the BBC, Ije Yesi na BBC. And we see a little snake there, the lion snake. And that's how a stupid person looks if it believes those lies. This is one of my favorites. Uh, so this is right on the cover of Ukrainian uh, humor magazine Parrots. Parrots. And it's old one. It's from 1963. Uh, so this uh, picture called uh, Portrait Sheptuna. So it's the portrait of Whisperer. So that's the guy who listens to the enemy voices. You see those uh, radio receivers on his ears. So he will listen to those lies and then he will whisper to his co-workers or friends uh, spreading those lies around. So don't be Sheptun. Don't be the Whisperer. And here's the last uh, cartoon of a day. And this one... They packed a lot in this picture. So a guy is playing organ. And of course, the guy is a CIA dude because it says CRU, CIA on its back. He sits on the crate with a dollar sign. So that's the money that he pays for the lies. And uh, there's two ducks coming out this organ, right? And one duck is called Radio Freedom. And another one is Radio Free Europe. So I guess those two were really... Uh, hated, being hated by Soviet government. And of course, it tells you what they spread lies once again and patrikatistva, uh, diversions, um, and stuff like that. So that's pretty interesting how it tells you that CIA stands behind those European um, enemy voices, Radio Freedom and Radio Free Europe. And you know, I actually found confirmation that according to the uh, priorities for jamming, uh, the worst radio stations were Radio Freedom, Radio Free Europe, after that Voice of Israel, then totally surprisingly Radio Tirana, so it's a radio station from Albania. So that's our socialist uh, friends were actually number four for the worst uh, enemies of the people. A little bit better BBC, German Wave, uh, Voice of America, look at that, Radio Korea and Radio Beijing. Okay, comrades, uh, that's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this video and maybe learned something new. We'll talk to you soon. До свидания. Goodbye. signed copy thank you and if you love my channel and would like to show your support please click on the link below this video and become the patron of the Oshanka show for as little as one dollar you can help us grow and create the new interesting videos about the life in Soviet 